None of you is being cut off, I promise. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So I am fortunate today. I actually have a film crew with me so I don't have to film myself. So thank you to the film crew. They actually totally phone take one. So this is take two. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, we are talking cordyceps again today. And this is probably one of the coolest things I've figured out lately. It's been a lot of trial and error, a ton of error, but I feel like I've made it to a really good place. Basically, I've been trying to figure out how to do some easier cordyceps tones. So if you guys have been with my channel for a while, you've probably seen my earlier cordyceps video where I use brown rice in a rice cooker, flood it with liquid culture, stir it up, let it sit in front of the flow hood for a few hours till it kind of dries out, gets tacky, then pack it into tubs. That method that I show in those videos is just a slight variation on an older video from Ryan Gates at Terrestrial Fungi who initially developed and showed that method. So for home cordyceps cultivators, you basically have two options. You can do jars or tubs. Now, tubs like these are really attractive because you just get a lot better yield per unit of effort, I would say. Jars are small, you have to do a bunch of them to get any kind of yield. It's kind of hard to reach down in the jar and get the cordyceps out of there. They're kind of tough to clean. So the idea of doing tubs is really attractive, but only if it's working for you. If you're getting a bunch of contamination, then it's not worth it. So what I've been working on over the last two years is trying to develop a PF Tech tub method. I started out working with jars doing basic PF Tech recipe, which is just vermiculite, brown rice flour, playing with different additives, just seeing what the cordyceps liked, what they didn't like, seeing how they responded. And the culmination of all my experiments is actually this tub right here. So in a minute, we're gonna focus in on this one. These are two different strains of cordyceps. They're both from Ryan Gates at Terrestrial Fungi. Uh, this one in my left hand is a SGTF strain. One of my right hand is mound four plus four B times seven. Obviously the one in my left hand is much happier. Nice dark orange color, really dense fruit body development there. Really nice yields in this one. And believe it or not, the one here in my left hand is just over a month old. So that's really fast production. The one in my right hand is just over two months old. Believe it or not, there's only one ingredient difference between these two tubs. This method that I'm going to show you in this video, it's probably 10 times faster, honestly, than that old mycelium flood rice tech method. I'm going to teach you guys for free how to do this in this video. The one thing you can do for me before you forget is give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying my content, please consider subscribing. I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. All right, so I started out with a basic PF tech, you know, just vermiculite, brown rice flour. Tried that, it worked, but I got really anemic flushes, not a lot of production. So I started looking for other nutrients that could really ramp this up and make it viable. So I was trying some different nutrient powders slash protein powders. Cordyceps militaris, they like to eat bugs. So I tried some cricket flour. It's just ground up dried crickets. Didn't really like that. So that was a fail. Then I was playing with a couple different species of cordyceps. I was trying out some Isaria tenua paste too, which is like a little white snowflake cordyceps. So I did some trials with that with mealworms. So you can buy these at the pet store, ground them up, added them to the brown rice flour vermiculite mixture. And the Isaria tenua paste liked it, but the Cordyceps militaris really didn't. So we were going for Cordyceps militaris here, so I considered that a fail. So what ended up being the real game changer was this right here, guys. This is dried whole egg powder. So you don't want egg yolk powder, you don't want egg white powder, you want the whole egg. Um, so you want dried whole egg powder. And that took it from zero to hero. So here in our gallon canning jar, real quickly, we have eight cups of vermiculite. We have three cups 
of brown rice flour and one cup of whole egg powder right on top. So I'm gonna shake this up and then we're gonna put it in the pressure cooker. All right, so that's what it looks like all shook up. I found out it just turns out better in the end if you pre-shake it before you put it in the pressure cooker. These jars just have a simple metal lid on them. I got a quarter inch hole drilled in it with just one of our Micropose self-adhesive filter discs on top just to let it breathe. And then when I put it in the PC, I do give it a aluminum foil helmet so that the aliens cannot read its mind. And then we're gonna put it in the PC, 15 PSI. We're gonna run two of these jars at once in our Presto PC, 15 PSI for 90 minutes. And once that's all sterilized, cooled down, basically all you have to do guys is add that four cups of liquid culture, pack it into a tub, and you're in business. All right guys, so we're all set up here, ready to make a tub. Everything, including me, has been sanitized with 70% isopropyl. We have our substrate out of the pressure cooker, fully cooled, our four cups of Cordyceps Militaris LC, and we have our tub all sanitized, ready to go. So these tubs I'm using have a 175 square inch footprint. If you use different size tubs, no big deal, but you're gonna have to do a little volume calculations. Uh, just some simple math there. You wanna make sure you do a really nice job stirring, shaking this mix to uh, not only evenly hydrate it, but evenly distribute all that mycelium and that liquid culture. So yeah guys, it's really important to mix your substrate thoroughly with this method. I definitely want to emphasize that. And when you're packing it in the tub, it's going to look like wet sand. It's almost like you're building a sand castle. But what you're going to see is within 3-4 days, that entire substrate layer is just going to fuzz up. Which is why I think I'm seeing less contamination with this versus the traditional rice cooker brown rice method. And at the end, I always take a alcohol soaked paper towel and clean up the sides of the tub and then you're good to go. All right, so that's it guys. You can see I spent a good amount of time mixing that thoroughly, even as I was adding it to the tub. That's very important and uh, you do want to even it out and pack it down. So I'd say I have about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half of substrate there. That's what I've been working with and it's been working out pretty well. It is a little thicker than what you typically do with a rice tote, but uh, it seems to be working out well with this method. So shoot for, I would say, between an inch and an inch and a half of substrate. So this guy's ready to go in a incubation tote. All right, guys, I had to jump in quick and do an update here because this is not one of our second round of blocks. This is actually the first round SGTF block, and this is a second flush. And we are at about 80 days after inoculation, and actually within a week or so of picking that first flush, these second flush mushrooms start popping up, and that does not happen with the old brown rice recipe so I've actually never been able to get a second flush with the old brown rice recipe I've tried I've let them sit for a while and usually they just get contaminated on me so just the fact that we got a second flush I think is is really interesting and uh, kind of another indicator that we're on the right track so I'm gonna go ahead and pick all these off Get them in the dehydrator. But real quick, I'll show you our second round that we're trying with the same two different strains from terrestrial fungi. We got one there and one there. Those are not even a month old. They're about 20 days or so old right now. You can see they're just starting to orange up. 
a little bit. So hopefully those will continue to get nice and orange and uh, we'll get a nice first flush off of them. So we'll just check back in a little bit. All right, guys, we are back. It is time to take a look at our round two cordy tubs here and wrap this video up. So this one isn't quite ready to pick yet. This is our SGTF tub. You can see same thing we saw in that first uh, round that we did. Just nice even pinning, nice uniform club shaped cordies going on there. Definitely a nice commercial strain here from Terrestrial Fungi. And here is our mound strain tub. Again, this was a freebie syringe and it's just kind of a wacky strain. Looks a lot different than that other one, but you get that with the this cordyceps breeding. You kind of never know what you're going to get. But it's interesting, even though we don't have a nice even set of fruit bodies, we do have some monster fruit bodies. I'm actually going to take the lid off of this one and we're going to go ahead and pick it. So right away you're going to notice we got a lot heavier yield once we put the egg powder into the substrate. We got like barely anything with the uh, straight BRF recipe on round one with this strain. See all those parathesia on the fruit bodies there. Just a really interesting strain. We got these big mutant blobs in the middle here. Those are kind of cool. They're going to weigh a decent amount though. Just really nice fruit bodies all the way around the outside of the tub, but not much in the middle. So just kind of a wacky strain, kind of interesting guys, but uh, let's pick this off and uh, see what we get. We're definitely going to get much better yields with the egg powder substrate versus the straight BRF. So that first tub, from what I remember, I only got like a couple ounces off of uh, that. It wasn't even that. I think it was like an ounce and a half, two ounces. Um, I think we're going to get a lot more here. Kind of interesting thing too is the substrate is so dense that they pick off a little nicer too. You can see it just kind of peels right off the substrate where with the rice-based substrate and they don't seem to uh, peel or break off as easy. So that's kind of a bonus too with this method. Nice cluster there. All right guys, so there's the money shot. So with our first round, just the BRF substrate, we only had about an ounce and a half of fruit bodies. Really anemic with this strain. Just the addition of the egg powder got us seven ounces of fresh fruit bodies. So we're going to wrap this up, guys. Uh, not saying that this is the end-all and be-all of cordyceps recipes, but it is a new, very cool technique. I think that has a lot of promise, and it is a really solid recipe. I would love for you guys to add, subtract things, play with your own recipes, and it would be awesome if you're willing to share. I always love talking to you guys and seeing what you have going on. So as always, guys, hit me up in comments. Let me know what you think. If you found the video educational, instructive, entertaining, any of the above, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That really does help launch it out into the YouTube universe. Helps us out. You can also support the channel by hitting us up on Patreon from purchasing from any of our affiliate companies. There's links to all of that stuff in the description. So check it out there, and I will catch you next video.